Well, if we can increase the EFF vote beyond uh, 50 percent and become the government uh, of South Africa, and if not so, then the ANC should not get more than 40 percent, uh, so that uh, they are forced into a coalition and uh, they have to concede certain principles in that coalition. Mm -hmm. who, who do you think you would work with should the ANC go under 50? It seems to be going in that direction, of course. Who are your likely uh, coalition partners when you think about it? Would the EFF go with the DA, with Action SA? Would you go with the ANC if they asked you to go into a marriage with them? Or would you go with MK? as the, the popular narrative goes? Well, we will go with anyone who agrees to the expropriation of land without compensation, which MK agrees to uh, even before the negotiations. The ANC, to a particular extent, agrees with it. It is led by uh, wrong people, and that's why it has got an inability to implement its own uh, beliefs. Um, and the DA, Action SA, whoever comes and says, let's work together, our first principle, which is non-negotiable, is the expropriation of land without compensation because the land question is long overdue. It has to be, it has to be resolved. But we speak to everyone. We don't have that attitude of uh, uh, this is the enemy, number one, number two, can't talk to this one, can't talk to that one. We have an open-door policy. You don't have a moonshot or a sunshot pet or, or anything like that. You will go with the people who are available to go with you? Yeah, absolutely, when they meet our, our <coughs> uh, requirements demands. and demands of um, expropriation of land without compensation. And um, the day the people who agree that um, the land must be expropriated, children must get free education and all of that, um, that is the day the sunrise pact will rise because uh, we are the victims of the sunset clauses. So we need sunrise clauses. It can't be sunset forever. It has been sunset for 30 years. The sun has to rise. Yeah. But you can't do that without amendment of Section 25 of the Constitution. Well, so we were doing that. We sponsored a motion in Parliament, in this uh, Parliament, and um, the motion passed. And we went to public participation, where public submissions, Majority of people who participated in that process said, I meant Section 25 to expropriate land without compensation. The ANC developed a cold feet right at the door and said we must expropriate without compensation their rotten land. What do you do with the rotten land? It was an act of cowardice. So um, because we have been there before, we, we just need to change the balance of forces to a point where the ANC will be forced to concede or whoever wants to be the majority in parliament. And you can't do that without the EFF. They will have to concede on this expropriation of land for compensation. The elephant in the room is, of course, Mkondo Wesizwe. Mm -hmm. um, the return, maybe, to say, of Mkondo Wesizwe mm -hmm. and the return of uh, Mr. Jacob Zuma. You remember you calling me about 20 years ago uh, that I shouldn't publish that picture in the club with you, <laughs> D.P. Floyd and Tutuzile Zuma. Uh, I don't know, maybe Tutuzile Zuma has finally <laughs> gotten the two of you together. Yeah. Um, let's talk about MK. Uh, do you speak to the old man? What is your current relationship with him? My relationship with the old man is very good. Um, I spoke to the old man. He launched that thing on the 16th of December. We met on the 15th of December, uh, if not the 14th, somewhere there. And um, he had actually uh, he suggested that there should be such an engagement to brief me about then his next political move. And uh, I had a different view. And I said, uh, look, we are here at the, as the EFF, and we think we've got solid structures and good uh, election machinery. We can. Uh, actually, with your endorsement, make some inroads in difficult areas where we couldn't make inroads before. And uh, that you do what President Mugabe did uh, with Chamisa and says, I'll vote for this young man because I can't vote for people who 
uh, tormented me. Um, that was not to be, but um, we agreed that let's go and fight this battle mm -hmm. and uh, we'll meet each other on the other side. You wanted him to endorse you? We wanted him to endorse the EFF. And we didn't, uh, want, we didn't want him to join the EFF because we never asked Winnie Mandela uh, to join the EFF because we knew that she was ANC through and through and she was too old to can change anything at that time. And we ran a risk of getting her to join and after she joins, she says, Viva ain't seen a meeting of the EFF because that's what she knows all her life. Mm -hmm. So you're like, let's keep her there, but she's no longer there. Uh, she's just respecting those she struggled with and all the, most of them have departed. The same thing with President Zuma. You can't say to Zuma, leave the ANC and join the EFF. And that's why even when he went to the MKP, he said, As I remain a member of the ANC and um, uh, 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 I'm going to campaign for MKP. And I find President Mbegi's comments to be very inconsistent. Uh, because for some reason, President Mbeki thinks we didn't know that he was behind the formation of COPE. And for some reason, President Mbeki forgets that he's the one who was saying um, he will not campaign for the ANC. Mm -hmm. That he's actually the one who started that kind of language, yeah. uh, that he has to be convinced why he must mm -hmm. vote uh, for the he ANC. He will vote with his conscience. He will like. vote with his conscience. And that at some point he was saying, his vote is a secret. Um, um, I think Halema also at some point said something like mm -hmm. that, that his vote is a secret. Uh, uh, and today they say, no, we ANC, we're pushing ANC. And you see that, oh, the issue has not been the ANC. Um, they were being factional in their approach. Um, um, if, if anything, I think President Zuma is doing what he's doing because he learned it from President Mbeki. It's just that President Begi did not have the necessary courage like Zoma and then come out publicly. But everything else he did is exactly what President Zuma is doing, mm -hmm. to endorse a particular party. Mbalula used to call him Dalai Lama of COPE. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But now, of course, he's sitting on the other side, yes. lambasting Zuma, yes, uh, yes. seeming to be, you know, the, the Dalai Lama, the holy one there in the corner. Mm. On the 29th of May, South Africa has the opportunity to, to make its decision, mm. right? Assume that many people, more than the EFF, mm. vote for, for MK. What is your next demand of, on Zuma? Would you ask him or MK and well, the EFF to consolidate and make one party? Uh, tell me about some of the conversations there. Well, well there's no need for one party. As long as uh, there is convergence of ideas, even if you come from different parties, because ours in South Africa is a multi-party democracy, and therefore the existence of other political parties should not be viewed as something that we wish to extinguish, because in doing that, then you would have undermined the latter and the spirit of the constitution of, of South Africa. So um, President Zuma says, um, land, we say land, he says jobs, we say jobs, uh, and many other areas. I, we, I, may, I may not agree that t uh, teenage pregnancy girls must go, must, to, must go to Robben Island. Yeah. Where are the boys going when the girls go to Robben Island? Because yeah. it takes the two. Or... But he must tell us that, uh, because it takes two uh, to make a baby. Uh, so to say girls only must go to Robben Island, it's a discrimination yeah. in its own. That's when, why we never agreed when we in us yeah. that pregnant girls must be chased away from school. Because some of those girls, the people who made them pregnant, by the same they, were, they were in the same school. So there, yeah. She loses her school time and then the guy progresses. So, but look, I don't think those are the fundamental ideas is married to. We can, we can always engage about yeah. that. In my assessment, uh, the EFF and the MKP differ on three key policies, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. You differ on the LGBTQI mm -hmm. question. Absolutely. Uh, Zuma's statement in the last mm -hmm. week or so that he will have to review that policy has had members of that community up in arms, uh, and it's a community you have endorsed and showed support to. 
even outside the embassy of Uganda in yes. Pretoria, you, you wore the, the rainbow scarf mm. as, a, as, a, as a symbol of solidarity with that community. Absolutely. The second would be the open border system. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps to your lamentation, you've said uh, foreigners who then find themselves out of the country must find creative ways to come back into South Africa. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've had rethoughts about those, those sentiments. And then, of course, the, the final question would be, such as the, the girls and the boys, mm -hmm. as you say, has the EFF reconsidered its approach on the open border system? No, let's start with the LGBTQ plus communities. Um, what are the bases, what, on, on, on which ideological basis do you ground uh, that uh, argument? Is, is grounded on which ideology? Because uh, there is no any other ideology which is progressive um, internationally that suggests uh, as a progressive political party, maybe in, worse in the left, you should not, not, not allow LGBTQ+. Plus. And I, I, my memory doesn't serve me well. Like you said, was so many years ago, where we were in a club with um, Dudu and them and all of that. But if I'm not wrong, President Zuma has got a, a child who is part of the LGBTQ plus communities. I, I'm not sure, and I don't know how he navigates that point uh, at home. Because my son once confronted me and said, I hear the EFF doesn't want white people. I said, what do you mean? They said, no, you're going to chase everybody to the sea. I said, no, I can't do that. I mean, he said, no, I was worried because I've got white friends. So I will have to battle if I want to chase white people out of South Africa. I will have to battle it first at home. Uh, and, and there are certain things that you just know um, you, you can't win. And, and they, you stand a chance of, of being embarrassed by those. There is no, we are not far from President Zuma on the foreign policy. There's, there's a talk here of illegal immigrants, um, and I think his emphasis is on that. But he is not the kind who can say um, Africans must not come into South Africa because we are one continent, and he advocated for that himself. He stayed in, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe, he stayed in Swaziland, he stayed in Mozambique. He was in Lusaka and everywhere else, including Angola, if I'm not wrong. So he's the last person. If, if anything, he's the one who should be advocating for this because he, he, he practically and personally benefited out of the hospitality yeah. uh, of Africans. And there's no way, no, everybody understands the EFF uh, argument. Do you know that uh, Venda was a republic. Uh, Lebua was a republic. Uputanswana was a republic. Yeah. Uh, and KwaZulu Natal and all of that. Uh, including Seskans. Yes. Yeah, Bantu stands. They, they, you needed a passport uh, to go to Venda. We collapsed the borders in Venda that, and said, no more. We are one thing. We are one South Africa because we're always made to imagine us being different people, the same way they make us believe now. After the collapse of vendors, um, of the border, we never experienced the influx of vendors into Johannesburg. The people of Vembe are still there. You will find them. It's not an abandoned land because they saw greener pastures in Johannesburg. They said, we're no longer staying here. We're going to Johannesburg. What these people are saying is a swarkhafar. It is threatening intimidating as uh, South Africans that you are actually going to have more in your yard if these people are going to come here, which is practically impossible. Why would uh, the people of Mozambique leave Mozambique? Because they are doing relatively well. Why would the people of Swaziland, and you know what is even worse is that the Swaziland people would have left without Malema because there's nothing they've done, nothing fiscal that can prevent them. The same thing with Lesotho. The people of Lesotho, it's Friday today. Tomorrow, if you go at the border of Lesotho and South Africa, there's no fence. They come drink this side during the day, at night go back. Mm. There are others in Lesotho who are now receiving yeah. Sasa, 
Yeah, in, in South, South Africa. Africa. I lived in Botswana many years. Yes. You'd go to a funeral in South Africa. Yeah. You know, the funeral would be here, mm. but you'd be eating uh, in the Botswana side. Yes. You just cross. Yes. Komu yeah. is in the side yeah, of no. Botswana. The borders don't seem yeah. to exist. Yes. But are you not advocating for illegality with that statement? They must find creative ways to come into South Africa. What are creative ways? Crossing the river. Surely there must be a type of border. Not a colonial system, mm -hmm. but a type of referendum to say, do you have the necessary papers for the instances of planning? Because the women will be here, they need to take the kids to hospital, for schools, you know, for urban planning uh, and development. There needs to be a, a quantity of how many people require medication in Joburg. If government doesn't have that plan, it's going to be a disaster. Do you regret those comments? No. Why don't you require documents to go to Gwazulu Natal and you're coming from here and you have nothing there in Gwazulu Natal and then you are going to collapse and get sick in Gwazulu Natal and affect their budget? Why is that not a requirement? What is different between you and these people who are there? Why can't we develop a policy that says if we're to treat a Lesotho uh, 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 citizen in South Africa so Swaziland or Swaziland or Nigeria once confirmed that this is a, a citizen of this particular country, these are the credentials, we treat this person and then we invoice their country. Why should we have a hospital and then be worried that sick people are going to be uh, sick and in then uh, influx uh, our hospital? Don't be worried about influx. You must be worried with healing people so that you save humanity. And the only way you can heal people is when you've got your own planning but you know that in case other people come from outside, you always uh, provide an invoice uh, to those countries that they come from. That's, that has been African planning, by the way. Those things you are saying is Eurocentric planning. We, you are talking about a funeral and a cow. You plan for 100 people, 700 That's people right. comes, and you never say, this is not part of me. No, you always know. You're we that embrace no RSVP Caspi. No, we embrace okay. each other. We we don't need invitation from each other. Um, the the Europeans are doing it. Uh, the people who are advocating for us not to do it. There is no border uh, in Europe. You wake up uh, in Milan, and then you go and eat breakfast in Paris, and have uh, uh, your lunch in Germany. They, with ease, without any paper, without talking to anyone. My brother, you're sitting here, you've got an idea, these people are not listening to you. Wake up one morning, get into a car, go and make that presentation in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, in Angola. Without knowing their language, but with a brilliant idea. Before you knew it, you know it, you are a citizen there. You're working there, they embrace you. So, the poor do not have the necessary means actually to can even leave their countries to come here. Most of the people you see here is the people who had the means to come here. But where's? Because I'm, we're going to Easter and I've got a property just next to N1 to Zimbabwe. I can't get out of my property with these people going back home. These are the people who you say they influx your country. They are not here to stay. They are here to make the means and they go back to their homes. They are never here to stay. They are never here to occupy your land. They are one, never one here to take away says, from One you. argument says, when the Malawans and the Zimbabweans go back home, mm. who is going to work here? Because there will be no staffing in Hamden, mm. right? The restaurants, the hotels, are all foreign HR. Mm -hmm. Those are the foreign hands that we use. The, mm. the counter argument is that it will be empty because these people come and work. Many of them do work that South Africans don't necessarily want to do. Are you in line with that argument? That, no. That, that foreigners are not stealing jobs in South Africa? No, no, no. no. The, the, the argument that when they leave, um, 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 our uh, restaurants won't have people and all of that, it's not entirely correct because they are hired by restaurants with an intention to pay very minimum wages and they don't want to spend... Um, on workers. So um, um, if they leave tomorrow and uh, South Africans who are interested to go and work, they will go and work. The problem is going to be for the bosses because South Africans are not going to accept a minimum wage. They, they, they will want 
uh, wages that speak to their uh, lifestyle, that speaks to their uh, living conditions and qualifications. So uh, bosses don't want to pay. The problem is not Zimbabweans. They don't hire themselves in the restaurants. They don't hire themselves in our houses. Most of these domestic workers are from Lesotho. Uh, it doesn't mean South Africans can't do that. But the South Africans are going to demand a certain Higher amount, amount of, of, of money and people are reluctant to pay. I've got a restaurant, I've got a farm, uh, I've got a butcher in a township. You will not find a single foreigner. Because uh, I've not, uh, the skills I've been looking for, right? Um, I, when I looked for those skills in South Africa, there was, there was no way I couldn't find them. So I found those skills in South Africa, and therefore there was no need for me to go outside. If I had looked for a skill and I didn't find, there was absolutely nothing wrong with me to go outside and get the people with the skill to come and work mm here -hmm. yeah, in South Africa. What does Siloma Lima look like at the age of 50? Uh, during 50. Early, early 40s now, I mean. 43. When you, when you imagine uh, Siloma Lima at, at, at 50, is he in his second term of presidency? Um, is he the, the leader of SA government? Is he the chair of the, the AU? Or is he still a freedom fighter, generally in the streets of South Africa? Is the man in red? We saw the, the Beyonce when you, when you erupted on that stage. <laughs> on, <laughs> on, on, at FNB, yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah. uh, my partner said to me, she says, look, he's going to go up. Yeah. He's going to go up. And I said, he won't. And then you erupted there. On the <laughs> <side>. <laughs> she was I said, so smart. Yeah. I draw it really <laughs> he says, she watches a lot of Beyonce. So she says, yeah. he's going to go up now. <laughs> so yeah. who's Julia at 50? Well, I'll still be a member of the EFF in good standing. Uh, the EFF will still be there. Whether I will still be the president of the EFF or not, <laughs> that will be the decision of the conferences of the EFF, elective conference of the EFF. And um, at 50, I'll still be playing a role, whether in parliament or in government. But I don't see myself going at 50. I'll still be the younger version and look much younger than Snao Tambo. So there's absolutely <laughs> no issue there. And... Uh, um, I've got a, a very relatively young wife. I've got a relatively young boys. No, young boys. I mean, one is six, the other one is seven, and the oldest is doing a metric now. So I'll still be that father who is there for his kids and then the activist of the EFF who's there for the people uh, of South Africa. I'm not driven by an uncontrollable desire to be a president of South Africa or a deputy president or anything of that sort. I will always serve and I will always be uh, an activist. Even when I go on retirement, um, um, if it was for me at 55 and everybody is opposed to that, uh, including my wife, uh, retirement would not mean I can't make a contribution to the discourse uh, and issues that are affecting our people. I. Uh, beyond 55 years, I see myself playing a, a much, much more bigger role in the continent uh, because there's no, uh, uh, you know, high-profile person who's still advocating for Pan-Africanism and African Renaissance and the unity of our continent. Mm -hmm. And our people are receiving it so well. The problem is that it doesn't reach other corners and then they only hear one message which is of hate and unity i mean a division why why am i hated for saying people must unite for saying let's come to i'm not saying let's divide i'm saying let's unite instead of being called a unifier who, want, who seeks to unify humanity not only in africa in the whole world no, why do you bring these people? Oh, these people are going to do this. These people are going to do that. Why? Since when is a unifier the enemy of the people and the enemy of peace-loving South Africans, people who advocate for prosperity, for um, international solidarity with the downtrodden? Why do you now characterize me in a manner you characterize me? 
it is not my people who say the things that you are saying about me in relation to this question. It is those who enjoy the out of the division of our people. They know that the unity of Africa is going to rescue the minerals they've been stealing in DRC and making Eastern DRC uh, look like it's Rwanda and they, those people don't deserve to be there. But if there is no border of Rwanda and DRC, who will say these ones are there? There's, there's a conflict there which can only be resolved by collapse of, of borders where people no, no longer see others as coming from the other side. That is unity. We're not collapsing uh, 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 borders for criminality. So when I said creative ways, I simply said, this is your home. You, no one can stop you. The same way these ones who are in government who are talking nonsense today, they found the creative way to enter these countries. They didn't go there with an airplane. A, a they didn't go with a passport. Mm -hmm. They all found creative ways. And, and, and it goes for all of them. There's no single one of them who has been there outside and who can say, I've been outside because they, I was on a church trip uh, to Mozambique. No. A including many others. I mean, Paul Mashadile, he has been, he has, no, was not in exile, but he has been in and out of the country. He has been to the camps to get briefing from leadership, do this, come back. Kassel Matale left the country through creative means, deputy minister of police, through creative means. And then when he arrived, he arrived in a camp of the PAC and he was looking for the NC. He couldn't understand the language. And as we were speaking, those people were saying, but you sound more ANC than what we are doing. He said, yeah, but I was looking for the ANC. They sent him back to South Africa. He didn't go with a passport. So what are you talking about? But that didn't make him to go and settle there. It sounds like you're almost going to say the only one that didn't go to the camps was Cyril. The only one that didn't no, go. No, he went. Cyril, go. Cyril went to the camp, but with an aeroplane and passport. Okay. Yes, yes. It was after uh, those things of uh, release of Mandela. Remember Mandela when he came out, he also visited some camps. And, and, and. So Cyril went under those. He didn't go through the means. Creative means. Ah, ah, went, uh, ah, ah. He, the whites took him there. Okay. Closing mm. shot on, on Cyril Ramaphosa. Mm. Uh, South Africa is in a crisis. Mm. The Dakazo deal has collapsed. Mm. SAA was sold for, for 51 rand. Uh, by the gentleman you told me years ago was spying on you. Mm. Remember, we were sitting in mm. Cape Town. Mm. You told me when Unali Mwanyana in the hotel, mm. Bravin used to put listening devices mm. and listen, hey, Muslim, no better one round, 40, <laughs> 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's, 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 the, the Katso deal has collapsed, but we're in crisis. Yeah. What, what do you have to say about this? First of all, SA, mm. then you talk to me about ESCOM, which perhaps is an even bigger mm. collapse than, than SAA. Well, um, Cyril has finished his job. His job was to come and destroy these things. So what you do is make them look like they are not functional, they are not profitable, they are not successful, so that by the time you go to sell them, the public is like, ah, we've been spending money on these things, they are useless. They did that with SAA, they did that with Prasa. They are doing that with uh, Transnet. And they, they want to privatize ESCOM as well. Because everybody now is angry with ESCOM. We don't get electricity, load shading. You have made people uh, angry enough to can now say to them, because we don't have electricity, let's shift this into the uh, private hands. You know, uh, Tepo, who did the Tagalo deal, it's a, it's a good an astute businessman, man of integrity, a, a black brother who succeeded in his own right. The problem is that he gets robbed by Praveen into some nonsensical deal. And now his image is, is questionable. They, they didn't only destroy SAA. They destroyed the image of a, a good, successful African story in Tepo. Uh, 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 so... Praveen and um, uh, Cyril were serving uh, the same agenda to come and collapse Who sent our them? institution. Who sent them? It's Who's white monopoly capital. 
It's white monopoly capital. It's the Rupert, it's the Oppenheimers. Remember, Rupert has got now a license to produce energy for us. If this ESCOM collapses, it will be buying uh, electricity from Rupert, from Patrice Motsepe, and others. So it is going to be, electricity is going to be sold like bread, you know, and then only those who can afford it uh, will get uh, uh, that electricity. And then the day uh, uh, Rupert, because he's a heavy drinker and a smoker, wakes up, hang over, he says, switch up that electricity. And they switch it off. They switch it off like it's his own house switching off the, the plug. It's an individual owned thing. You cannot put a strategic sector of our economy and of our livelihood into the hands of individuals. Electricity and its generation and distribution, it must be the sole responsibility of the state. Because no individual must do a favor to us. The same thing with railway lane. When you say you are privatizing railway lanes and all of that, one day we wake up on the railway lane to KZN. The owner decided to take the railway lane away. The trains are there, but there's no railway lane. So rather own the railway lane and give them locomotives. Okay, private sector wants to participate. That's fine. You can uh, provide uh, locomotives, but on my own road. The same thing with the roads. We build huge, big, beautiful roads through public partnership with the private sector. We can even toll them. We don't believe in this thing of free everything. We can even toll them, not e-tolls, proper tolling of roads. So we pay this private partner the money he has invested into this project back and then ask him after 30 years to leave our road alone. And then we don't do away with the toll gate. The toll gate now goes into the fiscus. Okay. Part in short, you said many years ago, Praveen almost destroyed your life. Well, uh, Praveen has always had a problem uh, with me. Um, you know, um, uh, when we came from Polokwan, we went uh, on to lead the Youth League and the ANC, we were being followed by Pravini's established rock unit at SARS. And um, one of the boys who was part of the rock unit, he was young, highly trained boy from the special task forces in the army and all of that came to join that unit. He realizes when we're in Deben that the people he's spying on are the people that he loves and support. And his conscience wouldn't allow him. And when he went back to say, but this is the leadership, we cannot do this and that, um, they said, no, uh, you must be removed from the post. So he brought me everything that they were doing. I took that fine because I was too young and naive to SARS. I gave it to Pillay and uh, Mahashula. Then... We had a meeting, me, Pile, Mahashula. We finished. When we finished, they say, no, there is someone who wants to see you. Uh, but it will be a brief thing, don't worry. I said, no, no problem. A white man with big hair walks in, she greets me, takes me into a separate boardroom, and then he says, man, we have a problem. What is the problem? The problem is that your taxes are not compliant. Uh, therefore, uh, Will it, you have to, you know, come back and sort out your taxes so that uh, you are on a clean slate and all of that. So I said, no, no problem. Give me that. It gives me that. I go back to the meeting to say to Mahashwila and Pile, no, it's fine. I met this guy. He raises some issues. Um, uh, let me leave. They said to me, yeah, it shouldn't be a big issue because we helped President uh, Zuma with his taxes. So even the, this even a small amount will help you. Pile uh, is a comrade, blah, blah. So I left. Then I didn't attend to those things because I knew what they were doing. They were silencing me. They were saying to me, move away from the rogue unit. 
and they, they couldn't silence me. So I fought, and when I fought, they came back to fight me very hard. Um, um, and, then, and then that's when I had problems in the ANC as well, then got expelled, then got my properties attached by SARS and all of that. Then they made a mistake of leaving a farm, which I was using to produce uh, uh, cabbages. I was farming cabbages and tomato and all of that. And then, boom, one day some city press journalist comes to interview me in my farm. Like, you're now out in the cold, what are you doing? So we interview, take an interview in the farm. And it was during the elective conference of the ANC? No, after. It's because he interviewed me on Wednesday, Thursday, and then that Saturday was January 8th of the ANC. So the ANC was so spoiled that their January 8th, that's why it's Saturday, Sunday, well, all, all papers page. must be front page. I became front page of City Press instead of January 8th. And then Bravino on Monday, they went crazy at SARS offices. Why does he still have a farm and all manner of things? And then that's when they came uh, to take my farm. So, and I had said to them, well, don't expel me, uh, leave me with the membership, but you can suspend me for 10 years from occupying any position, both in the ANC and in government. Because I always knew I'll go into farming. Then they expelled me, I said, Guys, I'm done. I'm going to farming. Then I left uh, these political things and then I went into farming. Then Pravin came to fetch me uh, in the farm. That's why we're here today. If there's anyone to be blamed for this, it's Pravin <laughs> and, and Seren. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone is to be blamed for 80,000 people at FNP, yes, it's, it's Pravin. Pravin. They, they were mobilized by Pravin <laughs> and Seren. Okay. Yes. All right. yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Malema. It's sure. been... Uh, Good to, to chat with you. Uh, good luck on the elections. Thank Do you, you trust the integrity and the independence of the IC now that the, the MK and the ANC lists have leaked from within the IC? Well, it's, it shouldn't be a big issue. Um, you know, our IEC is, is a one institution that is credible and has been running elections uh, for some time now. And in a very diligent manner, I, um, they, they, there's nothing called perfect. Um, uh, there will always be those rogue elements, uh, which the IEC, when exposed, it doesn't hesitate to act uh, on those people. You know, in 2014, there was almost violence in Alexandra when the EFF contested elections for the first time. Then the EFF fighters said the EFF is robbed, the ANC was given wrong votes, blah, blah. I said, no problem, give me the stations where the EFF was robbed. They gave me the stations. Then I said to them, give me the party agents of the EFF who were in those stations. There were no party agents of the EFF. So I said, how do you know you were robbed when you didn't have a party agent? So you think election is Twitter. Mm. You think election is Facebook. You think election is Maungela eh? sitting under the tree talking about how much you are going to win and then that which you are talking about Lengela, must be the result. I said no. And because they were not listening to me, I drove from Polokwan to IEC uh, Operation Center, called a press conference, accepted the outcome of the results. So I want to win. And I want to dispute these elections and put up a fight, but it must be on facts, not on emotions. Elections have got a potential to cause a civil war. It cannot be that we're going to get into a civil war because you simply lost. Elections must never mean blood in Africa. Elections must never mean guns in Africa. And that's why I don't agree with that narrative. What we are busy with now is to always make sure we oil the election machinery of the EFF. This is how this thing is so transparent of elections. Counting happens at the voting station where you voted. After counting the uh, result slip, 
must be put outside the door of accounting uh, station. Your party agent must go and take that result slip, a picture, and send to the EFF uh, National Operations Center. The EFF then takes that into their own system. Then you get your actuaries to come and consolidate those things. They know how. Those are the best brains. They consolidate your numbers. Then they take the results of the IEC. They match them. The, what do you have in the EFF must speak to what the IEC has. And if there is a discrepancy, the actuaries then say there is a discrepancy of 300,000 votes and then the discrepancy is in the following voting stations. This voting station said EFF 200, but the IEC on the same voting station says 20. So they just removed zero. This, then you've got scientific evidence, which you can go to electoral court and have the results overturned. And the electoral court is an agent court. That's why I say to you, you have no reason to cause violence. You've got a recourse. A violence is necessitated by the absence of recourse. Mm -hmm. So we've got a recourse. Then we go uh, uh, to, the, to the electoral court. We show them all of that. Done. And the, my experience with the IEC is that once you show them the discrepancy in terms of what is the actual receipt slip saying and what they have captured, they are quick to amend that. They go check everyone. They're like, no, the actual one is this one, not this one. They change it. So I'm, I'm not going to join. I'm very, very vigilant with the IEC. I always fight with them about Satu people who occupy uh, uh, political Positions, offices yeah, yeah. and then still become presiding officers. When they heard that Satu said all teachers must go and vote uh, for the ANC. So their response was simple, which is what our members must do. We are going to publish a list of presiding officers. You have a duty to object. Again, no emotions, no uh, Twitter, uh, trending, uh, what, what, no, uh, facts. When you say they are sad to people, who are these people? Where are they found? Why? And we find a Satu chairperson or secretary or treasurer. Once you find them there, you go look for them in the internet, in the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Google. You are going to find him making stupid statements. Internet doesn't forget. Now, because he wants to be a, 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 a IEC presiding officer to push a, a, a narrative of stealing votes, he says, no, I'm, a, I'm neutral, I'm not. You just simply go into the internet. You are, going to, face you are there. going to find the bastard. Then you say, Bamba Lomont. Mm. This one must be arrested and removed from a voting station. So I'm very vigilant. I've put the, uh, as required by the constitution, party agents everywhere. And the good thing with this receipt slip thing is that if you've got actuaries, you've got an uh, operation center where these things get captured and then reconciliation can be made quickly. But there is this voting station you don't have a party agent and you don't know the results. You are able to call the voting station next to that one and say drive to that voting station. Outside the door, you are going to find result slip. Take it a picture and send it to us. The result slip comes with the VD number of that voting station. Take it a picture. So with us having presence all over South Africa, it becomes easy to get all the voting stations results, reconcile them, and then wait for the IEC. Once the IEC releases, we reconcile and we say, no, this is wrong. And it doesn't mean burning down of IEC offices, even when we find evidence of wrongdoing. It means we now go to a neutral court because our judiciary is very, very independent. The problem is uh, this man uh, who was uh, who's the chief justice. Raymond Zoll. Yeah, that guy, when he leaves that thing, he must be arrested. He must be properly and thoroughly investigated for having engaged 
in actions that almost compromised and collapsed our judiciary. But I know what judiciary can do for democracy. It has worked for me. When Praveen was coming for me, it is the courts were asking questions, but why? But sequestrating, take him out of parliament. Now they've taken my farm and bank, I'm in parliament. Still, take him out of parliament, sequestrate him. The judge says, why do you want to sequestrate him? We must go and recover the money that he owes us. The judge says, but the sequestration act is much more weaker than the SARS act, which has got more powers and the capacity to can unearth more than what we are going to get through the sequestration act. Therefore, I, I agree with this argument that you are using your power to take him out of parliament. You are not looking for money. I know what the judiciary can do until Zondo came. And I'm happy I didn't vote for Zondo. I'm happy Zondo got two votes out of men and women. For sure it's his vote and Lamola or something, I don't know. But two votes. And still Cyril went to appoint him. Where have you ever had a head of a judiciary? And these legal bodies and these lawyers don't report him to judicial a service commission because if we NGOs do are quiet. the NGOs they are quiet they don't report him there where have you ever had a judge saying yo it was good for Cyril Ramaphosa to be elected the president of the ANC not country ANC you are a judge is commenting on internal political matters of the ANC he's a branch he's a member it's, when he says it was good for Cyril to be elected president of the country, blah, that's fine. Is the uh, two arms, arms of, of the state same. showing each other respect mm -hmm. and reaffirming each other and building confidence. But party politics, by that alone, mm -hmm. when Mukwe Mukwe was made to publicly apologize for his comment about on, in, uh, on an international on an international matter, matter. Mm -hmm. or a on, on, matter. On, on, on Israel. And his personal views on Israel. He was made by the JSC to apologize. To, apolo to withdraw or apologize. Otherwise, there were serious consequences. He did exactly that. Even though it was against his beliefs. That is the power of the Jews. Ye is a man at the highest office who says, Yo, the ANC has Did elected very well. a very good president. He says our organization, in a way, oh, the, why must I be concerned? Even me, I'm not concerned who the ANC elect. It's none of my business. Where's a judge giving a political opinion? So, what rescued us from this judiciary from being collapsed is because his term is coming to an end and we can't wait him to go but we must not leave him we must follow him this guy we must follow him for having brought judiciary into distribute and this is the guy who deserve to be impeached by parliament so we 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 in the judiciary we still have elements of whites who are anti-black transformation uh, uh, and and uh, anything black owned especially in the private sector they will kill it um, uh, but it's not all of them. It's here and there and all of And we know them, some of us. When they come to interviews at the JSC, we always are not hesitant to put it to them. Are you a racist? Do you think this judgment, what language is this? What are you using? So I, I said to you, remember when we started, there is nothing called perfect. But our judiciary, we can work with what we, we, we have. They want to capture it daily. And it is these men and women, especially those ones of Pretoria North, who are firm on the law and not on personalities. Final words on Becky. You said, you know, he seems to think that we did not exist when he formulated COPE. Uh, his, his sentiments against uh, Zuma and this election, very pro-ANC, uh, anti-Zuma, 
at uh, speaking at UNISA two days ago. He seems, of course, to now be a martyr, as if under his reign and leadership there were no mistakes, there were no accidents, when in fact load shedding started under him mm. and many other things. What are your comments on that? Well, uh, it is their own internal ANC matter. The ANC members are throwing each other uh, with a snake. So I really don't want to enter. Like I said, he, he shouldn't behave like he's never, he has never been a part of any other thing outside the ANC. Pumzil was not going to go there without his approval. Uh, Bazimash Law was not going to go there without his approval. Uh, Smart Zingonyama was not going to go there without his approval. Um, the Nkutu, Nkutu brothers who have now since departed, may their souls rest in peace, they will not have gone there without his approval uh, uh, and all of that. So, uh, uh, um, it was not uh, perfect uh, under uh, his reign. No, no, it was not. I mean, not, not for people who were HIV, uh, they, they, HIV they, they, infected, uh, not no, for the people ordinary who were people. in government, the, not the, on the, 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 the the levels of inequalities increased under him. Uh, the levels of poverty increased under him. And then we started experiencing unemployment growing under him. Although the economy was growing, it was unable to trickle down to ordinary men and women in South Africa. So uh, 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 to say the problem started uh, under Zuma, uh, it's not entirely correct. Um, uh, 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 President Mbegi must learn to take responsibility uh, uh, on some of the issues that he knows very well. And they are proven, you see, the thing with uh, um, uh, load shedding, you, you can just go back to check. It will tell you date and time when it started and because of what, where, and who was the president. So um, it shouldn't be that... Uh, 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 he now wants to create an impression that the ANC is everything else. That is the problem with these uh, old people of the ANC who become presidents and then they don't know what they are going to do after being president. So um, um, Zuma's strategy was a very good strategy. It's just that he left under the cloud and then was in conflict with the law. But when he finished and all these things were not there, he was supposed to just go to Ngandla. When he exits Ngandla, it's when he goes on a mission. But maybe in he Africa. did. Maybe he did. And like you, Zondo. No, no, he did. No, 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 no. He did. He did. But he went home with those things. Uh, and it's not like me. I was not on retirement. Zuma was on retirement. So he went on retirement with these things. And then they had to call him back to ask him what is this, what is this. What is this? So, but that strategy of Zuma was good to go back. That strategy of Mandela was good to go back. This strategy of staying in Kilani and seeing headlines every day on the polls, the temptation to want to rule from the grave will always be there. Um, um, it, it, it's not good uh, for former presidents to be addressing each other in the manner they are doing. Uh, President Mbegi, highly respected, uh, very clued up, on economics and African matters, the continent needs him there. He, could, he can easily avoid internal politics and go and uh, 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 facilitate peace in many other uh, parts of the continent and go around giving lectures like he was doing at uh, uh, UNISA without necessarily interfering with internal matters. That is statementship. So for him to be partisan the way it is and saying he's going to campaign for the ANC uh, and uh, uh, this is his ANC and all of that, as a state man, we should all be going to him, irrespective of his political party, to seek his wisdom. Because and now he becomes but, an, elder, but an elder of society. He's, an, he, a he's supposed leader. to be an elder and not a player. So President Mbeki enters now the playing field. And when he enters the playing field, we're going to have to play against him. Yeah, that's an invitation he's making. Uh, uh, the elderly thing now st st stands aside. You come back into politics 
and you come back as active. He has never left politics, he will never leave politics, but not as an active player in the local politics. We need statesmanship, we need uh, elders uh, in the country, not only in the ANC. Like Mokwe uh, Mokwe, when they said he was going to form a party, I was like, but he doesn't have to do anything of that sort. Uh, you know, Musenek, uh, those are elderly people that if anything goes wrong now, they are going to rock up at anyone's door who's causing a problem and they will receive the attention of such people. But if anything goes wrong, President Mbeki rocks up, we say, but you took side. Mm -hmm. You can't come now and want to tell us what to do because you took side. We must all find comfort in him and not see him as a functional uh, role player in the current dynamics, not only internally uh, in the ANC, but also in the build-up to elections. It means he's going to say things that we're going to have to respond to him, yeah. and we won't hesitate to do that. Some members of the EFF on social media refer to Chief Justice Raymond Zondo as Barry White, and then some of them call him Comrade Zondo. They say, I'm a comrade. Yeah, he's a comrade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's a, a comrade. He's an the... ANC comrade, full, 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 full. Only ANC members will celebrate an election of their member, of their president. Uh, um, it's not our business when we are not members of the ANC or supporters of the ANC. In the JSC, we always say it's not correct for judges to show their political affiliations, although judges are voters. There is a judge who came, and it's Moshabi, I forgot, Rowling, who said, yeah, I vote for the ANC. And Chief Justice Mokwe uh, Mokwe was they said, no, you can't say that. It doesn't matter who you vote for, but you're not going to come here as a judge and use that platform to say the things you are saying. Don't you think you have to withdraw and apologize? He withdrew that. And it was not me, it was the chief judge said, no, but you can't. Mm. You can be ANC, I mean, judges are voting. But you cannot put it the way you're putting it. It was reckless. And he was told there and there, the interview, this uh, EFF people must find it, of Judge Rowling, where he was called to order, saying he's voting for the ANC. Go and put this thing on the wires. Because people, when we speak, they just say, uh, we're talking nonsense. He was called to order there and there. Why is Zondo not being called to order for celebrating internal political victories of a certain faction? Should be taken to mm. task. Okay. Thank you, Mokone. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. for your time. Thank you. How does your weekend look like? Uh, we are now going to the EFF uh, Election Operation Center. We have established state of the art election operation center okay. uh, here in Johannesburg, um, in Auckland Park. I think uh, at the right time they will call the media to come and inspect it. And then tomorrow I'm in Rustenburg uh, for the provincial election manifesto. And then Sunday I'm in uh, uh, Metzimaolu, uh, Sasolbeck for EFF Free State uh, Election Manifesto launch. Okay. Mm. So there's no time in Hyde Park? No, the time in Hyde Park will always be there. Hyde Park, you mean where I, I stay? Yeah, yeah. They will, you know, you can be any busy politician, but never be busy for your wife and your children. Otherwise, you'll experience what Zuma is experiencing with uh, uh, Duduzan. You cannot have that kind of a relationship with your children. And the only way to have a good relationship with them is that under whatever circumstances you have to make time available and just say to them my son is 17 years old now doing metri i still ask him how was it at school um, what have, what have you done today so he feels accountable he feels this guy cares and that's why in his five years in high school i was never called to school that he has misbehaved about this or that or that because he knows ah, they can't he's gone to a school. No, no, how they, can they, uh, it, when the red parades arrive? It's not can... true. It's not true. Uh, you know, if there are any people who are not scared of anything, it's teachers and, 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 and principals. So if my child doesn't write homework, they must be, you think they will be scared too? If they are scared, they will write a note. Just to imagine them. you and Marshall Zamin coming into the school <laughs> with the backup there. But I go to, to the, the school to without. The I go to the school without anything. I went now to the assembly 
where my son, uh, the, second, um, the second born, was receiving his 20th merit uh, for this year. And then they said the parent must come. The mother was not there, I was here. I went. I go to the school and I always tell the security, when we enter the schoolyard, you must never come anywhere close to me. Whatever you do, play very far, because I don't want to cause sin here, and I don't want these children to be feeling uncomfortable. Because now I'm doing my parental uh, duties. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mix with them. So I'm going to Rustenburg. I'll be waking up in Hyde Park to Rustenburg. And then I'm going to Free State in Sassol Bay. My house and family is in, in Hyde Park. What good reason do I have to come from Rustenburg, pass my family, go and sleep in a, a Metzima Hall, which is one hour away from my house? This gives me an opportunity, busy as it is, I should be able to go in, uh, see them before they sleep. If I miss that, then see them in the morning before I leave. There must never be a vacuum, because a vacuum is what the Boers did with Nelson Mandela. Look at Mandela stays in prison for 27 years. Today, Mandela, these children of Mandela, this children of Mandela that. Today, the African family is dysfunctional because the Boers took the fathers to Johannesburg and left the women in Matlabatin. And they only get to see their husbands after a, every eight months or so if they are lucky. And the family unit becomes dysfunctional. Society becomes dysfunctional. I'm a, I'm a child of a single mother, uh, and I don't know my father. And I always grew up without having my father, but I always knew there is something missing here. And I vowed to never be an absent father. 